buddy. You're looking fly today. I mean, this is kind of unusual. You've got the coat on. And you've got the sweater on, I know. And I don't. I know, I'm Jay Friesen. I'm Brian Matson. And this is Dead Reckoning. This is the spindle, which is the portion of our show where Jay and I will talk about current events, things going on in our culture, and we're going to do it through the lens of our Christian faith. So, welcome, Or as welcome uh, to the Brian show. said before we went on the air, this is the, let's have some fun. This is the total BS. This segment. is the really just the fun portion of our show <laughs> where... Yes, I said BS, but it's my show! We just like to kind of kind, kind of BS. Jay, Jay, you've been really annoying me this morning. The world is flat! This guy has been running the around. The world is flat. Yes. With a new song lyric. The world is flat. See, Jay thinks that this is a good song lyric, and so he's been just walking around the studio just blurting out over and over again. The world is flat. And he's like, I think that's a great song lyric. And I'm like, no. No. Yeah. But you know what is great on the show today what is R.J. Moeller. Man, have we got a great show. How to pick up chicks on Twitter, not the Anthony Weiner way. Yeah, not the not creepy way. The guy <laughs> actually the got creepy a wife way. R.J. Moeller, uh, he is principal of Hashtag Productions. He is a social media uh, expert, and he's going to come on the show to sing the praises of Twitter to, for us And not today. to mention the amazing stuff he's doing with Hashtag Productions. It's, it's he's really bringing together good. like Jews and Christians. Robbie Zacharias and Dennis Prager are going to be like going head to head. It's it's it's. I don't know. They're going to be going head head head. But they're going to be having a, big a event conversation. Down in Atlanta coming up and soon. It's be awesome. RJ is the man behind it. RJ is going to tell us how, in fact, he did meet his lovely bride through Twitter, and he's going to tell you how you can do it, too. Hashtags and honeys. <laughs> nice. Uh, and right. Right. We just got the title of that segment down. On the commentary today, Brian's going to be talking about the importance of a title. Yeah, we're, I'm going to be talking about um, how God is a person. He is not the life force pervading all things, nor is he the checked out uh, watchmaker who doesn't care about what goes on in our and world. And my favorite thing about this week's episode... Bartender Casey will be joining us for a combination bartender confessions in honor of the pig because he's bringing the Dead Reckoning Scotch Ale. Uh, I'm kind of excited about that. We've, uh, yeah, Casey has brewed for us our very own Scotch Ale. Um, the weather's getting cooler. It's my favorite time of year. I love the fall and a darker beer. And this is a dark Scotch Ale. And it's, we're gonna we're gonna unveil it on the show. We might have a little bit of a conversation about uh, you know um, beer. the consumption of alcohol and you know Ben Franklin's wonderful quip that beer is proof that God loves us or something like that. It's delicious. Oh uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the ethics delicious of alcohol and that facilitates kind of stuff. community, brings people together. You know, Brian, I'm working on a new short documentary uh, about oh, a are. particular brew. No kidding. Um, in Missoula, Big Sky Brewing is it does a does a yearly brew on behalf of a nonprofit called All Souls Ale, and we're doing a short documentary on that. That should hopefully be out in time for Christmas. I'm 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 kind of excited about that. It's going to be delicious. All Souls Ale. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's something. Um, Oh, the, the Dead Reckoning Scotch Ale has um, some coffee in it. And that mm -hmm. coffee is done by Gary, Revel Coffee Roasters. He's in the warehouse right... He's right over there. On the other side of the mm -hmm. camera. Yeah. In the warehouse, he makes he roasts his own coffee. And we did a short documentary on him, too. If you go to Red Futon Sketches on YouTube, you can look for that called Complex Revelry. He did the coffee, and I think I might actually have him try to come on the show uh, with Casey. That, yes, that We can all great. sample it and talk about the merits of good drink. Yep. So, excellent. Right. So, the so this is a spindle. We're going to talk about current events. Uh, I haven't been following current events because I'm so depressed. <laughs> and we're going to have a guy on to talk about the merits of social media. It has yeah. been a really depressing week in the news. I think so. Um, because it's all about government shutdowns. On the one hand, you've got uh, the liberals and the Democrats um, calling the Republicans and conservatives economic terrorists. Hostage takers. And on the other hand, you have the conservatives going, we can't make any money because the river is shut down, which actually has happened. I'm going to talk about that. I mean, that's actually my spindle. I'm gonna, you want me to start? Start. I'm going to start. Uh, we no longer have, ladies and gentlemen, we no longer have a White House. We have a Spite House. All right. Uh, our, our president has taken upon himself to make sure, now that the government shut down, to make sure to make this as painful as possible. Now, I think that most reasonable people, I think even if you're if you're left of center and you're on the left side of the aisle, most reasonable people could understand that there are certain things that the federal government administrates and runs that are not staffed, and it is not important that we shut the public out of them. Um, the World War II Memorial, I mean, that is a travesty that we are keeping out uh, veterans from honor flights from entering the World War II Memorial because the government shut down. 
that's a travesty. The Vietnam Memorial, the same. And so there's been a lot of sort of uh, uh, headline grabbing things about the administration shutting down certain things. But beneath, there's little all, ones. There's beneath little the ones. headline grabbing ones, there are little ones, some of which affect us right here in Big Sky Country. Montana, by the way. We're in Montana, we're Billings in to be God's, exact. The, we're, in, we're in God's country. Uh, there is, ladies and gentlemen, in a little town of 200 by the name of Fort Smith, Montana, there is a gravel parking lot. This gravel parking lot sits at the base of the Yellowtail Dam, which is administered by the Bureau of Reclamation. It is a gravel parking lot. It is not manned. It is not staffed. It is not... The government doesn't really do anything with this parking lot except a couple times a year pump out the outhouse. Okay? So there's nothing that needs to be done uh, but the federal government has taken upon itself to barricade this gravel parking lot because we would not want anybody to actually take their boat, park in the parking lot, and then float down the Bighorn River. Now, here's something you need to... No, this is my spindle item. Hang on. Here's something you need to understand about the Bighorn River, which sits at the feet of the Yellowtail, the Yellowtail Dam. It is one of the finest trout habitats in the world. People We're talking a river runs through it. People fly from all over the world, literally. Many uh, wealthy patrons from California, all the way from California to New York, fly to the Bighorn River. They pay a guide to take them down one of the finest trout habitats in the world. Um, the economy of Fort Smith, Montana is almost entirely made up of fishing guides who take people down the Bighorn River. And the government has decided to close a gravel parking lot, costing the residents of Fort Smith, Montana and the fishing guides thousands of dollars in guiding fees. So there, forget the big headline ones. I'm talking about there's real economic uh, impact from, I think, completely unreasonable, uh, spiteful actions by the federal government. And that's just flat out unreasonable. I don't care where you are in the political I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read uh, the, re uh, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up Paul Harvey and now the rest, the rest of, the story. of the story. So we have um, a friend of ours in our church small group who's, uh, whose relative, close relative, is a fishing guide on said Bighorn River. Yes. There are many access points that... Uh, By which the, you could access you the river. You could access the river because people, it's a public river, okay? This is yes. like a major pub. The government does not own this river. Yes. Uh, so anyway, there's private access points, and they are using them. So this particular gentleman has only lost two clients, and that's because of weather. Because once you're on the river, you're stuck for about 13 miles. Yep. Um, you can't get off until you get to these access points because the government won't let you get out at the ones they want you not so, to get out So at. what he's done is he's had to go and rely on basically the generosity of his neighbors who have riverfront property. Private landovers, the put, Indian Reservation, in. I mean, you name it. Yeah, it's it's still absolutely unreasonable. It, it's stupid. Is yeah, what it is really is. stupid. So uh, uh, speaking me. of other stupid things, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about money. Here's what happened. So our buddy John that we talked about last week, the funny John. John. At John's Buffalo. At John's follow Buffalo. Him on Twitter. He really loves He's it when people awesome. follow him on Twitter. He is, he is like tried and true through and through red, white, and blue, man. I mean, the guy's a Marine. He's working for the Department of, I'm not going to say, here in Mon here in Billings. He's a federal. He is a non-essential federal employee. He's a non-essential. <laughs> so he got laid off, which, you know, well, not laid off. He got furloughed. furloughed. Yes. Okay, furloughed. evidently there's a distinction. Yes. So uh, what happened was he got furloughed, and then his boss came to him and said, you know, you can go collect welfare for a stopgap. Unemployment. Welfare. Well, unemployment benefits are not quite the same thing as welfare, but go ahead. All right, whatever. Uh, free handout from the government. So um, <laughs> Free handout from And taxpayers. I'm going to get to that in a second, too. And then they voted to pay these guys for back pay. Okay? Correct. So if he collects unemployment, he has to pay that back. That's fine. I get that. But he's still getting paid for Correct. work he's not doing. Back right, where they're the furloughed he's, federal you know workers are he's going been to studying. get back paid. He's been studying because he's he's in school. He has been watching TV, a lot of TV. He's been working out and watching and going to see some movies, and he's getting paid for all this. And where is this money coming from? Here's a, here's the argument. Here's the argument. Here's the government shutdown is is only on a small segment about Obamacare or you know Affordable Care Act or whatever you want to say. It's about big government the versus small. Care Act. <laughs> it's about big government versus small government. 
Okay, and this is this is the particular point that the Republicans want to argue about and the particular point the Democrats want to insist they must have because it's making our big government bigger. If we have a small government, it's going to cost less money to run. When it costs less money to run, that means less taxes for you and me. We don't have to pay as much to the government to keep all these programs going. So what that also means is that turns around, that's money in my pocket. As a business owner, I'm like, I can go out and hire three or four people. We can increase our business. All right, John We can Boehner, get back to the- Wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up? <laughs> you're just wrap making the- Look, now you're just making the Republicans point. You are just a right-wing shill. How much are they paying you? Is Carl Rove paying you they, for this? You know what they need to do? If these people are really non-essential, Cut them off. Okay, now you Let them really go. are the heartless. In business, you are. If, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. In business, if if he's not essential, he's gone because this bottom. I don't have any profit margin. You're a heartless, heartless, heartless Republican. I am gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the side of poor John Vanderbilt and and all the federal workers. Let him here. go. He'll find a job. He's smart. Um, he's first savvy. First of all, you have to make a distinction between what 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 the technical term non-essential means not essential for the core functioning of a business. However, in the private sector, businesses all the time have employees who are doing absolutely useful, productive things for a company, but if they had to pare down to core essentials, those employees would be laid off. So non-essential does not mean useless, cut them off. No, I'm not saying he's useless. I'm saying he's totally useful. Right. But look, if I can't pay my bills... And I have to take that, out more debt to do so. That brings me to my next point. If I have to pay my bills and take out more debt to do so. Brings me to my next point. That's not an investment. Brings me that's to not my me next point. That's not leveraged debt. That's Thank not you. me saying, I can take out, I can borrow this money at 6%, turn around and All make right. 12% on it. That's legit. Calm it's down. when I have to like borrow a bunch of money like the U.S. government's doing. Calm and down. then pay a bunch of welfare. Put that. Calm Where's down. Where's the money coming from? Calm down. Where's the money coming from? Calm down. Calm down. You said, if I can't pay my employees, I lay them off. This is not a question of whether the employees can be paid. It is a question of whether the employees will be paid. This is a sheer act of will by the federal government to not be paying their workers right now. This is no fault of their own. They're minding their own business. They're going to work. And keep in mind that when they do come back to work, from their furlough, all the work that had to be done is still sitting there on their desk. So the idea that, oh, they're just going to get paid for doing not nothing double the is output. not really true. That, that presumes the work still has to be done. I'm saying time have a is heart. money. Here's, here's, here's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, I cannot get fired up about furloughed workers getting back paid. Do you know why? Because that is a drop in the bucket in terms of our government's spending problem. All right? I agree with you about the spending. back to my first point. It's I a agree money with problem. you about the spending. I agree with you about, I mean, the incredible amounts of debt that we're racking up, the trillion-dollar deficits. I agree with you. But you know what? Um, trying to make up that gap and that difference on the backs of a federal employee who may go weeks and weeks and weeks without a paycheck is not something that I'm particularly interested in. So give them their back pay. We've got a we got bigger fish to fry. We have got entitlement reform that has got to take place in this country. Nobody really wants to talk about that. We do have Obamacare which is now crushing business and crushing our economy. Let's I, not take okay. it out of the hide of the John Vandermolens of the world. I am going to hire contract employees so I don't have to do two things. I don't have to provide health care. I don't have to pay unemployment tax. I don't have to pay uh, right. Everybody's going to become a subcontractor. Insurance. There's Everybody's going to be a subcontractor. It's not good for anybody because it costs me more money to hire somebody full-time than it does to contract the you're same fired, job. You're really fired up today. You're fired up. It doesn't wow. make any sense. I know it, it just doesn't. doesn't make any sense. And I know you're angry. This is why we've for stayed off. This is why we've stayed off of social media this the, week because we're the, it's the, depressing. The, the entitlements are being paid by either debt, Chinese money, probably, or or my tax money. I have okay? an idea. I lose profit margin to pay. It's just it, you preach it to the choir. Is, I'm not. Where, I'm where, not. Where, I'm trying to argue with you, but you're not really arguing my point. I so that's not fun. <laughs> I mean, I am Fox News. I'm not going to argue your point at all. <laughs> yeah, that's just great. <laughs> no, I mean, the fun part of this show is like, look, I agree that on paper you can look at the idea of the federal government voting to give back pay to all of their furloughed workers. Doesn't make any sense. The private sector would never do this. I agree with you on paper, but at the end of the day, at that the the is day, not where 
that is not the problem, and it isn't where no, the, the fight problem needs to be is had. A, the problem is a money problem. We have a problem with debt. It's either on an individual level or it's on a government level, and we need to quit borrowing money. But unfortunately, we can't we can't operate in the black with the money we're coming in. So we got to turn around and borrow money, and it's just going to kill us. And we just keep raising the debt limit all the time. And, and there's a reason. There's a reason companies like Apple are at the top of the corporate food chain now in the world. It's because they got a massive cash. Yes, they have, they're in the black. Okay? They're in the black <laughs> These big time. The black. They've got a big profit margin. If it wasn't profitable, they cut it. And here's the thing. I understand that it's government. I understand government is not business. But look, you get. we have Medicare and Medicaid, which is a government-funded medical. All right, right. Medical. And now we're going to add Obamacare on top of it. Um it's well let's talk let's talk about the um the Obamacare rollout That's because That's three three this is, government funded medical programs. Uh, well, you're forgetting Medicare Medicaid uh, what is it Medicare Part D which was the oh. prescription drug plan. Um you're forgetting about I a lot of I just rolled that into the meta right. meta Listen, stuff. Right. Listen. Let's let's talk about the reform, Obamacare. Just reform Medicare. We don't need to I want to talk about the the Obamacare rollout. Here are some interesting numbers for you. And maybe maybe you like us have been staying off the news, so you're not aware of this. Obviously, we don't totally stay off the news. Um, you you might not be aware that the Obamacare exchanges last week rolled out. That means that the websites were up. Come and enroll <laughs> and get your Obamacare plan. Speaking of money problems, yeah, no, no, yeah here's here, this is amazing. Okay, so the websites do not work. Um, Bartender Casey, my friend, mm-hmm. Bartender Casey has tried to um, sign up, I think, 175 times and has yet to get past the login screen. Okay, this website does not work. Um, People who are actually making it through the process are getting spit out numbers, getting numbers spit out at them that make no sense. There's no rhyme or reason. This is a broken system. It was not ready. The IT aspect of this was not ready. Now, here is the thing that's going to blow your mind. one government contractor out of Montreal has been paid, of federal tax dollars, has been paid $88 million for the development of the Obamacare Exchange website. That's money that didn't even stay in the United and States. Another, and another company has been paid $55 million. What are we up to? $130 million. Let me ask a question. I want to ask you a question. What is the going rate for a website? The uh, last couple I've paid have been between three and 5000 Yeah. <laughs> A hundred and thirty million dollars on a website. People, we have a problem. We have people, I mean, whoever is 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 negotiating the, these things is so out of touch with reality. I mean, you talk about a windfall for a for a for a website design company. Oh, let me get this government contract. They'll pay me eighty-eight million dollars to create a website that doesn't even work. People, this is the beauty of government. It's out of touch. You know, but wow. I do I do you know, and I, I read an article and I don't you know, I've got liberals on one hand posting, you know, just stupid articles, and I've got the conservatives on the other hand posting more stupid articles. Right. Anyway, they're Two stupids don't make a right. Um, but one of the articles that a conservative posted was like the government, the Utah National Guard paid forty-seven thousand dollars for a mechanical bull so they could help recruit because it's a big attraction. Yeah, the for mechanical bull. So yes, I, that's. I don't think mechanical bulls cost forty-seven thousand, but I don't company, think so either. And, and I, you know, this is one thing I want to say uh, too. I mean, I know that the, I don't know the, if the left, article's legit. I'm just like, really? Come the on. left, the left. This brings up another. This is the where we are talking about government spending, and what we're talking about is government wasteful spending, overspending. Wasteful spending. I cannot believe that you can't get a website to run when you spent 130 million dollars. Okay, I understand it's a complex website, but somebody. I'm in, sorry. Well, the um, good news is the good news is that there's some places in Canada because they're mostly a welfare socialistic country that we're moving towards um, that are paying up to 47 percent in tax so that guy you know he, he's walking away with 40 million maybe <laughs> Instead of and, the, and the canadian government gets the other 40. now here's the here's the no, interesting thing can you imagine if we kept going down this road which we, we will are. obviously That's because of well you make thirty thousand dollars a year and suddenly you're up to 35 40 and it's not uncommon because i mean you know alberta sections of alberta are up to 47 percent i've got a friend that lives the up tax there. rate yeah you're losing half of your income that's where we're at. You have to live on fifteen thousand dollars a year. It, it, it's that's that is where we're heading now. Wasteful government spending, forty-seven thousand dollars. Guess if you want to do that. Forty-seven thousand dollars for right, a mechanical right. bull. That seems a little I extreme. I just threw that out there because somebody's it's a silly padding article. it. No, it was a funny article. No, but it brings up an interesting issue. Yeah, we're almost out of time. Hurry up, wrap it up. I can't wrap it up. Um, 
we have wasteful, wasteful government spending. <laughs>